Hey, my name is Sean. Welcome to Echoes in Eternity Bourbon. Have you ever hated being stuck in the middle? So that's what we have here today. This is a bottled and bond by 1792. You've got the standard offering, you've got some full proof, but right in the middle here, you got the bottle and bond, a hundred proofer. I was able to get this at the Alabama ABC year end drop. I actually got a couple bottles of this. Uh, one of these bottles will be part of a giveaway. When we hit the random subscribers, when you when we become 1,792 members, anyone that would comment in that video, once I get to that point, will have an opportunity for this exact same bottle. Not the one that's open, of course, one that's <laughs> sealed and closed. But yesterday I did the 1,792 Sweet Wheat. I, I really enjoyed it, and it's funny because it's so different in the comments. Some people are like, I'd never get this again. You know, this, you know, I don't like this. This just didn't move the needle for me. Others are like, I really enjoy this. This is a fantastic bottle. So it's neat. It's kind of neat to have that bottle that's kind of on both sides of the fence. You know, and for those that have watched the videos, they know that 1792 foolproof has always been really hard for me because I always had this really harsh aftertaste and ethanol that I just didn't enjoy. But I finally found a bottle I liked. It was a store pick from the bottle shop. I listened to you guys. I, uh, I got some pours out. I let it set for a long time before I went into it, and I really enjoyed it. And so there's the traditional 1792 offering, which I was very fortunate as well because the team from my work actually got me two nice bottles. One of them was a Woodford. Another one was the standard 1792 offering, along with some amazing cigars. So I was very thankful for that. But I wanted to dig into this one today, this bottled in bond. This will be my first experience with the bottled in bond. I hadn't seen it in, in this area. And then fortunately in the last, you know, with the bottle drop in Alabama, and then I found one in a store. I'm like, man, I've got, I've got a plethora of these now. So this is awesome. So I've got two different store picks and the standard offering, but let's get into this store pick. I'll tell you what, when I cracked this thing, the nose caught my attention right away. So I'm hoping it follows through here. I hate to I hate to pull something from my wife's um, I guess standard of itinerary here, which she would say when I say, hey, "What does this smell?" Like? She says, it "Smells like bourbon." It smells like bourbon. You get a nice caramel flavor. You get some nice oak. You get some vanilla. You know, it's only a hundred proofer, so it's not blowing me up with any kind of ethanol. It does have a, a nice, I'd say, high yellow color to it. It is very, very oily. That's the one thing I, I, I found out with that sweet wheat and this. So the viscosity is good on it. So I do really expect a really nice mouthfeel on this. I'm using my 13th Colony distiller, Distillery Glen today. I'm getting a little bit of a, a fruit on here too. I'm trying to identify what this fruit is. It it's it's funny because it almost smells like a blackberry, but not and not a super ripe blackberry, like a blackberry, you know, that's in transition um, and, it, and it hasn't quite matured yet, but it's got a, a neat type of tangy. Man, it's got some great viscosity on it. So a lot of neat things going on there. So let's see what we've got on the on the, the pour on this. So this is neat. You kind of get 
a little bit of the caramel, almost a little bit of a honey, some spice on it, which is very nice. I'm getting some of the oak on the back of it now. Um, it's a little bit more upfront and punch than I would say the sweet wheat. But with the 1792, I'll tell you, the mouth feels on, on both of these that I've had the last couple of days are outstanding. Now, it is about 10, it's about nine points uh, higher on proof between the bottle and bond and the sweet wheat. And you can taste a little bit of that, but it does have a nice spiciness to it, which I do like. Um, you know, lately I've had a couple of bourbons that have had like this light, fine um, black pepper. This is a little more intense. Um, so it's got a little more pop to it from the pepperiness on this. But I'm really enjoying this now. You know, 1792 had kind of pushed me away with some of their astringency and that foolproof. But now that one's opened up, I think it's done a lot better job. This has a, a nicer finish and it kind of it hangs on the back of your palate there for a little bit. That kind of that caramel uh, on the nose is opening up a little bit more too, which is nice. So for the 1792 bottle of Mon, I really, really enjoy it. I think the price point on these are like $36 to $39. Uh, I think it's a great bottle to have on your shelf. Am I going to go run out and hunt and grab another one that I must have? No. But it's very similar to that sweet wheat and the fact that as I got lower on this, I would probably, if I saw one at MSRP sitting on a shelf, I'd pick up. Just because I think it's a nice thing to have on the bar. It's different, you know, type of bottle and bond than some of the other stuff that you would get if you're introducing somebody into it. Or if you're going to be sitting around and, and just enjoying some time, watching a game or hanging out with family. You can sip on this and, and it gives you a, a great nice little bourbon flavor. I didn't pick up a whole lot of fruit um, that I got a little bit of that, like, like I said, not uh, maybe an underripe blackberry. On the nose, I didn't really get it on the palate, though. But it just drinks like a good bourbon. Like I said, that spiciness hangs around a little bit. Finish is about a medium finish on this. Not super long, but uh, that spice really does hang around on your tongue for a little bit, which is nice, too. I like that kind of spice. Not everyone does. But, you know... Now you got me curious. So, like I said, that, that sweet wheat got a lot of, I mean, conflicting. I mean, love it. I wouldn't have ever buy it again. Really enjoyed this pour. Didn't do much for me. And I'm like, wow, okay. And that's cool, though. I mean, that's the, the point that I like. We're all not going to like the same thing. Some things I don't like, you guys are going to be like, oh, this is fantastic. It took me a while to get around to Four Roses. At first, I was like, man, this is just something about this Four Roses that's not doing it for me. Then I got a couple really nice batches, and I'm like, yay, Team Four Roses. So that's the fun part about it. But I'm going to use a real, I would say, a scientific method on this. I think I'm going to pour myself some of this sweet wheat and some of this bottled and bond. And in between, I'm going to use this very special water that nobody else in my family likes to use, but I enjoy. It's TAP. Um, TAP is one of my favorite waters. You know, it doesn't cost a whole lot extra, uh, and, and I think it's special water. <clears throat> so cleanse my palate out a little bit. Let's get into some of this sweet wheat. You know, I was, I was thinking of with the comments, I'm like, man, am I just... Am I just tatering on this because I enjoy this? But man, I don't know. I enjoyed this yesterday. Like I said, it kind of reminded me of a Widow Jane Decadence, but without all the maple, just kind of some of the flavors and some of the mouthfeel and things on that. This is 
my proof points lighter on over here on your right, my left. Uh, but the coloring looks about the same. Like I said, the 1792 bottle and bond has some amazing viscosity. But this one does too. I mean, they are just a lot of oils in these, and, and I like that. So the 1792 bottle and bond has a little more uh, pop on the nose, but it's, it smells a little harsher than this sweet wheat. I think the sweet wheat just has a a nicer nose, and it doesn't have as much ethanol. And there's not a whole lot on here, but it just it it smells nicer. It's smoother. It's the the edges on it are rounded off a little bit better on the nose. And I really, really enjoy that nose on there. But I've just had some of the 1792 bottle and bond. Let me try some of this sweet wheat again. Because I really enjoyed this yesterday. Yeah. For me, this sweet wheat, there's just something about it that I like better. And it doesn't mean that everyone's got to like it better. It just means that I like it better. Uh, you know, and if you've got a couple of the bottles, try to compare them and see what you like. Maybe you like something a little more punch in the mouth. Maybe you like something a little bit more, you know, uh, ethanol or spicy forward. But for me, if I'm going to sit around all day and I'm going to sip on something, I would prefer to sip on this. Now, if I'm just going to have a nice pour with a friend or something, I'd say, yeah, we can go for the bottle and bond. But if I'm going to sit around and I'm going to be... Having a few pours during the day, it's 91 or 92 proof. It's not going to kill me if I have a few pours of it. And it's just really, really nice. Like I said, in this one for me, there's just something about the mouthfeel and some of the flavors that remind me of a Widow Jane Decadence, minus the maple. Um, but it's got a nice finish on the back part of it. It's kind of got that earthy uh, type of a, a grainy type of pancake type of thing. I don't know if you got like some Kodiak pancake mix, uh, kind of the multi-grain one, not just the traditional flour type of stuff. Kind of has that thing going on. Let me get back to the TAP uh, and see what we've got here. Uh. So I'm going to go back to the bottle and bond. Now this one smells like more like a traditional bourbon. You get the caramels, the vanillas, you know, you get um, the charred oak and stuff like that. So you're getting some of that. A little more flavor pop. When you drink this or this is a little bit smoother a little bit muted down on some of the notes, but then they kind of follow up. This one has a, a stronger finish. Um, and and it, like I said, it's a good bourbon. I really, really enjoy it. But for me, there's just something about the sweet wheat that it's just so soft and it gives such nice subtle notes. And it's got a great mouthfeel that I just enjoy more on it. Man. And I'll tell you what, looking at both of these, they're both very viscous. But that the bottle and bond um, may show more oils, but I like the mouth feel um, on the sweet wheat better. Man, that TAP is good. Yeah. Both excellent pours. I would definitely buy them both at MSRP. I actually, the more I come back to it, I may pay five or so more dollars over MSRP for this one just because I really like the mouthfeel. Doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. It just means that this is the one that I prefer best. I think they're both good pours. I think they're a good price point at MSRP. I wouldn't hunt them secondary. Uh, but if I saw them sitting at a shelf in MSRP and I was about done with one, I would pick one up. I'd probably spend a few extra dollars on this one, but I definitely wouldn't hunt it secondary. 
I think these are also great offerings to give someone if they're at your house, if they're new into the bourbon game, but they don't like higher proof stuff like me. I like flamethrower stuff, but I also like something that's good flavor if it's got a low proof. This one's not as intense, but I think it's smoother. This one gives you more of a traditional bourbon pop in the bottle and bond. So I don't think you can go wrong either way on those. So I know it was a little bit long today, but you know, I just, I, I saw all the comments yesterday. I said, let me go back. Is there something I'm missing? Both of these, I think are very good bottles for the MSRP. Um, if you're looking for more of the traditional type of a bourbon that has more of a, you know, the traditional kind of characteristics, bottle and bond is probably your thing. If you're looking for something that's just maybe a little bit smoother, softer on the edges, has some different things going on, I think the sweet weed will be your thing. But man, I, I appreciate it, you all. I just have so much fun with you all in the comments. Patreons, thank you so, so very much for all you do. You really are the backbone of everything that goes on in this channel. And I'm thankful for all of you. All you watching, I absolutely appreciate you. I love I loved the comments, you know, like if you like it, comment on it if you think I'm doing well or I suck, I, you know, let me know. I, this is an open forum type of thing. You know, we're respectful, but we enjoy each other. But, you know, and also if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, you know, it really helps the channel grow and it helps me get other bottles out to people and stuff. And you could be one of them. Um, but most importantly, if you're working today, I hope your work day goes by fast. I hope your off time with family and friends goes by slow. My favorite on the sweet weed out of the two, but cheers and God bless. Y'all have an amazing day.